My name is Kayla and I will be going through this kitchen design with you today. So we're going to start out just by drawing out the walls of the room and then dimensioning our space. We're going to go through quite a few different cabinet options, our base cabinets, wall cabinets, and full heights, and the different configurations we can do there. We're even going to create a custom door style. We're going to work with some doors and windows, uh, show some of the options available there, and we'll look at our library and see what Chief Architect has to offer as far as our library items. We'll go through some different material properties, so how we can customize materials and import them. And we're going to create a custom ceiling. You can see the ceiling design we're going to work on here today. Then we're going to work with some electrical options and go through some of the rendering options that we have. We'll finish up by doing a cabinet schedule and by creating a layout, so a, a construction document for our kitchen. So let's go ahead and jump right into the program. We are going to be working today in Chief Architect Premiere, so I've just opened up a blank plan, a blank drawing space for us. So what we're looking at right now is just our 2D where we're going to be drawing the floor plan. Up here we have our architectural toolbar, so these are the tools that we use to draw. And all of these options can also be found under the menu options, so if you go to build, you'll see those same exact options, walls, cabinet options, placing doors and windows, the same ones that you will find here in your toolbar for shortcut. So we're going to start out just by drawing out four walls. If we select our wall option, you can see this is our parent tool, it's our straight wall tools, and then all of the child tools are here on the side for us to use. So we have our exterior wall, interior, we have a foundation wall, and several other wall types for us to use. I'm just going to use our exterior walls. We're just drawing out one room, so I'm not really concerned with the wall type that we're using. All I want to have is to make sure that we have four walls drawn. And so I'll just click and drag to draw those all out. And once I finish the area, so once all four walls are connected, you'll see this living area appears. And I'm just going to take a camera view of this space. So here we have our camera view tools. and I'm going to do a full camera view, which is where we click and drag within the space so that we're standing inside of it. We also do have a full overview, so if you're doing a full home and you want to see the exterior of the home, this is a great one to choose. And we also have a floor overview. So that's like a dollhouse view where you've removed the roof and ceiling and you're looking down into the room. We're going to use this full camera, and I click and drag just to draw where I'm going to be standing within the room. So just by drawing out those four walls and connecting them, Chief Architect has already placed a floor underneath my room. We have a ceiling above. We even have a baseboard here. And all of the materials that we're using, the ceiling height, those are all set up in our defaults. So if we take a look at our defaults, that's this little wrench option. These are all the defaults for this particular plan. Chief Architect gives us the ability to set these all up before we begin, and you can even save those as particular templates. So if you have a set of defaults that you're going to use frequently, you can change all of the defaults and save it as a template so that future plans can use those same exact default settings. So we can set these all before we begin. If we take a look at cabinets and our base cabinet, this is what we have set up for our default cabinet for the program. So we can, for this particular plan rather, so we can edit this before we place them or we can edit them after we do. When we place these later, you'll see how we can go ahead and open them up and change all of the settings after we have placed the cabinets as well. I'm going to exit out of here and what I'm going to do is I want to dimension this space, but I also want to still see my camera view. So I'm going to take this tab here and I'm just going to pull it out until I see the blue space over here. So I'm going to tile these two views vertically. Once the blue space showing me where that's going to be is in the right position, I'll just release it. So I'll show you that again. I'm just going to pull it out and pull it around. So once that blue space is in the right position, I'll just release and drop that into place. We can also adjust the views so we can change the sizing. Um, I want to have just a little bit bigger camera view than our floor plan view. 
And here in my space, I'm zooming in and out by using my scroll wheel on my mouse. And then I can also click down on my scroll wheel in order to pan around. The same thing works in a 3D view. So if I zoom in and out in my 3D view, notice my camera moves along with it in my plan view. And then I can also click down and move around within that view. All right, so now in my floor plan view, so I'm going to highlight that window. I'm going to dimension this space, and there's a couple of different ways we can do it. First off, we can select a wall, and you'll see we have two temporary dimensions that appear. And these are editable dimensions, so I can select, put my cursor right over the dimension and click it, and it'll allow me to update what that dimension is. So I can type in any number and it'll change what that number's going to be. But I'm going to do a, a different way. So we have some manual dimensions where I can click and drag, for instance, um, let's do our interior dimension. If I were to draw that dimension within the space, it'll tell me my drywall to drywall dimension. So I could use those, and those are also editable. And then we also have a number of automatic dimensions. So I'll show you what these look like. So if we were, for instance, to use our auto exterior dimension, it's going to place an exterior dimension throughout the entire house. In this case, our single room. It's going to place it on every wall, and these are also editable. So if I select a wall, I can select the dimension to change it. Now the way that these dimensions look are determined by our annotation sets in Chief Architect Premier. So I'm going to undo this, and we're going to change the annotation set to see how it changes our dimensions. I'm going to undo that, and let's change over to our NKBA annotation, since we're going to be working in a kitchen and bath. Now, when I click on my auto exterior dimensions. It's doing it at a half an inch scale, which is the default for our NKBA annotation, and it also changed it to inches, since that's typically how we would work for a kitchen and bath. And we now have slash marks instead of arrows at the end of our dimension lines. So annotation sets are a really handy way to be able to control the dimensions and to easily change up uh, the dimension, the way that they look for a particular space. There's quite a few features built into those that make creating plans very easy. Now I'm going to undo that again, and we're going to use a fourth type of dimension. So if I select within this room, I have an NKBA auto dimension tool. So the reason why I'm going to use this one is you'll notice now it's dimensioning to the inside of my space. So it's still placing them on the outside edge of the walls, but if we zoom in here, the dimension line runs down to the drywall because I want to be dimensioning interior spaces, not to exterior walls. So now that I have the dimension that I'm going to use, I'm going to select each wall that I want to physically move, and I'm going to click on the dimension, and then just type in what I want it to become. So in this case, 277 inches and hit enter to update that. Now I'm going to select this bottom wall and this perpendicular dimension. And this one I want to be 180 inches. And I'll hit enter to update that. We were pretty close to the correct dimensions. So you can see Chief Architect has a lot of different options for dimensioning spaces depending upon how you're wanting them to dimension. Now I'm just going to move these dimension lines over a little bit. And we'll work with dimensions a little bit later too when we get into an elevation view. So now we're going to start working with our cabinet tools. So to start with, we're just going to place our base cabinets. So here are our cabinet tools. This is the parent tool. And the very first child tool is our base cabinet. Now we can place these either in 2D or in 3D. So if we get into our 3D view, we can also place in this view. And you can see the boundary lines of the box showing us where it's going to be placed before we place it. Now if I drag my cursor into the corner here, notice how the boundary box changes to accommodate a corner cabinet. So if I were to click, it would drop in a corner cabinet. And when I draw in 3D, it's also updating my 2D view. So if we scroll in here, it's placed the cabinet module and it's also added in a cabinet label. Now I'm going to delete that cabinet because I don't actually want to have a corner cabinet. We're just going to delete that and I'm just going to place a standard cabinet over here in the corner. Now what I want to have is a blind corner cabinet. So I'm going to leave this cabinet here for right now but we're going to wind up deleting it. I mostly just want to leave it so that I can easily place the cabinets next to it. 
So first I'm going to place a cabinet over on this wall and it's going to be forward facing and Chief Architect is smart enough to, you can see by the arrow indicator, it's showing which side is the front of the cabinet. It's automatically going to place the front of the cabinet away from the wall. So I'll click to place that second one and then I'm just going to select this cabinet and delete it. Notice as soon as I do that, my label changes for both of my cabinets over to blind corner base cabinets. And even though there's no physical cabinet module here, it still extended the countertop across that open space. Chief Architect is a very intelligent program, so when it sees two cabinets close to each other on, against a corner, it's going to assume that you want a blind corner. You can always override things if you want to, but it makes it nice and easy to place things like this. Okay, so now we're going to place a few more cabinets. I'm going to place one right next to the first, and I'm going to place all of the base cabinets along this wall and edit their dimensions as I go. So we'll place one more here, and this one I'm going to resize to 36 inches so it's wide enough for a sink. I'm going to place another one over here, and this one we're going to reduce down to 18 inches. It's just going to be a series of drawers. We'll place another 24 inch cabinet, and one final 24 inch cabinet. Then along this wall, I just need one more. And that cabinet I just placed, I'm going to open this one up to edit it. So in order to edit any object, I can either double click on it and it'll open up the specification, or with an object selected, I can come down to the edit toolbar, which this edit toolbar is specific to editing whatever object is selected. So if there's no object selected, the edit toolbar disappears. But once I select an object, it'll give me options in order to edit that particular one. So I can also use this open object, this, which looks like an open door. So I'll click on that and it's going to open up our base cabinet specification. So here's where I can make any changes I want to to this cabinet. Earlier I edited dimensions of cabinets by using the edit handles on the cabinet itself, but we can also open up the cabinet in order to adjust the size and position here. I can also edit the dimensions of the countertop, backsplash coming off of the cabinet, and the toe kick. Under box construction, I can change the box over to inset or change the overlay, um, change it to a framed or frameless. I'm going to keep it a frameless full overlay cabinet. And here on front sides back, here's where we can change the actual components of the cabinet. So in this case, I want it to be a three drawer cabinet. So when I click on a component of the cabinet in the preview here, it will automatically drop down to where that it lies within this panel. So here we have a single drawer and a door. I'm going to take this door and I'm going to make it a drawer. So here we have our item type. I'm just going to switch over to drawer. And that's an awfully large drawer. We're not doing a pull out here. So I'm going to take this particular component that's selected and I can split it. So I'm just going to split it in half to make three drawers. To edit the dimensions of the drawers, I'm going to select the first component and 5 inches is a little small for what I want here so I'm going to change that to 6 inches. Hit my tab key and you'll see the preview update here. Notice also that as soon as I did that it automatically locked. There's a little lock right here that's showing me that it has locked that particular component. So now if I were to change this particular drawer, let's change it let's say to a 10 inch drawer. When I hit tab, it's going to update the bottom drawer and not the top one. And I can unlock them simply by checking this checkbox. So being able to lock and unlock components gives us a lot of control over the sizing of them. And when we make changes to other components, we can be very specific about which ones we don't want to change. If I've changed this to a six inch drawer, I know that I want it to stay a six inch drawer. So I'll keep that locked. So as soon as we have the cabinet looking the way we want it. We can just click OK and you can see it update here. Also, my label, if we look at our plan view, changed over to indicate that it's a three-door base 24 cabinet. All right, I'm going to do the same thing to this 18-inch cabinet. We're going to open it up. I'm going to select the door. Notice it drops me immediately down to the front side's back panel and has selected the door. I'm going to change it over to a drawer. I'm going to go ahead and split that, and this time I'm just going to accept the dimensions as they are. So now we have two cabinets with three drawers. 
I'm going to move around. I want to be able to see everything I've drawn. So now we're going to take this cabinet and we're going to change it to a pullout. So I'm going to open it up and we're going to have to make a couple of different changes here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this door and I'm just going to delete it. So it'll automatically change that to an opening. So I'm going to select the component again and select delete again. So now we just have a single drawer. And the reason why I'm using a drawer is that we're going to show the 3D view. We're going to open up that drawer later on. And a pullout is going to work quite a bit like a drawer. But I do also want that pullout to match the door style. So I need to get into my door drawer panel and come down to my drawer style. And instead of using default, I'm going to get into the library. So this is going to open up a subset of our library objects. It's going to be just door and drawer styles that we're going to see as we browse this library. So we can get into the core catalog, which are all of the cabinet styles that we have built into the program. We also have manufacturer catalogs. So if you're using a particular manufacturer, you can scroll through, find a particular cabinet that you want. Um, if you know the style that you're looking for, you can use the search bar in order to search for it. And you can also import and create your own, and we're going to work on that just a little bit later. We're going to create a custom door style. So if there's something that you don't see within this library, you can definitely just create it yourself. I'm going to expand just our core catalog of door and drawer styles because that's the style that I've used for my doors throughout the rest of the kitchen. So I'm going to get into doors and rectangular, and then we're going to take a look at our beaded doors, and I want this framed panel door. Click OK. And you can see the update changes here. And now I need to change where that handle is. So down in, actually we're in the right panel. So here in the store drawer, instead of having the default, we're going to change the vertical position to indicate where the distance from the top is going to be. We're going to drop it down to three inches, which is just below where that frame is. So once we see that preview looking the way we want, we can also add things like moldings. So if we're doing a countertop edge profile, that would be where we would add, add it in our moldings. We can add feet and pilasters, panels. Um, we'll work with some panels later. Um, here we can change the materials. We'll change the materials in a different way later on. Um, and here we have object information. So if we are using a manufacturer, you'll see that automatically here, or you can always type it in yourself click OK and you can see that change. Now in order to update the material, I'm going to use my material eyedropper to just grab an existing material and I'm going to paste it right onto that component. Now notice that my label here still says it's a one drawer cabinet. I want it to indicate that it's a pullout. So I'm going to open that cabinet back up and under our label panel, instead of using the automatic label, I'm going to actually specify a label. So let's just do a pull out 24 inch cabinet. You can see the preview showing what that's going to change to. And when we look at our 3D view, we've now changed over to pull out. So Chief Architect will automatically place labels that'll save you quite a bit of time, but you can also always manually override those. So now we're going to place a couple of other cabinets. Let's move on to placing a wall cabinet. I'm going to select the wall cabinet option and I'm going to drag my cursor into the corner because this time I actually do want it to be a corner cabinet. Then we're going to open that up and when we've placed a corner cabinet we have a couple of additional options that appear here. I'm going to deselect this diagonal so it becomes a pie cut cabinet and we can also add in a lazy Susan. I'm not going to do that for our wall cabinet. And everything else I think I want to stay the same for this wall cabinet. I'll select OK to apply that. And now I'm going to place a wall cabinet on either side of it. And one more here. Then we're going to place a full height cabinet next to it. And we're going to resize this full height cabinet to be a 36 inch wide cabinet. Now I do want to point out as I'm resizing cabinets, it's going to automatically snap, if you look at those temporary dimensions, to three inch increments. 
So if you're staying within standard cabinet sizes, Chief Architect is going to make it very easy for you to resize. But we can always open up the cabinet and override it if you're going to be doing very custom sizes of cabinets. Now for this cabinet, I do want it to be a 99 inch cabinet. So we're going to resize that. Uh, the width is 36, the depth we're going to leave at 24. And I'm going to go down to my front sides back. Actually, we're going to keep the component sizes the way they are. That's perfect. Um, but I am going to add a molding. So down in our molding panel, I'm going to select to add new. And again, this is opening up a subset. This is just moldings that we're going to see here. So in my core catalog, I'm going to take a look at our moldings. And our crown molding, we'll just choose one we like here. So I'm just going to choose this very first one, just a simple curved molding. And we'll select to add that in. I'm going to change the height of it to 3 inches and the width we're going to make 3 inches as well. And notice how it's encroaching into my cabinet so we can offset it. We're going to make it a negative 3 offset so that it's going to sit on the very top of the cabinet. So once that preview looks correct I'm going to click OK and you can see that cabinet we created. Now before I do anything else the door style that we have on both the wall cabinets and the full height cabinets is not the door style that I'm looking for. And let's say that we have a scenario where there's not that particular style available in any of our cabinets, including the manufacturers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom door style. To do that, I'm going to open up a brand new plan. So we're going to be creating a custom symbol, and custom symbols are always created in new plans and I want to maximize my screen so I'm going to grab this initial floor plan and just pull it over and then move my tab over to the floor plan so we're now on that brand new then I'm going to open up a cross section because that's the orientation we want to be in in order to draw this custom door now what I'm going to use to create this is our polyline solid tool so polyline solids I'm going to click and drag to just create one this is essentially a slab of concrete so if we open it up, it's automatically one inch thick and the material is set to default just to concrete. Then we're going to manipulate this shape in order to create a custom style. So first off we're going to change the dimensions because this is way bigger than we need it to be. So we're going to change this to, let's do 24 inches wide and 36 inches high. So now we have a, basically a slab, a slab door style but we're going to do a little bit more work on this. So I'm going to take another polyline solid and I'm going to draw over top the first. I'm going to create the space for a hole in the frame. So this polyline solid, I need to change the dimensions first. I want it to be three inches from all edges and it looks like it already is. It actually looks like I've drawn this to the exact dimensions that I want it to. That was convenient. All right. So now I'm going to open this polyline solid up, and right now it's a one inch thick polyline solid, just like the first, but I'm going to use this checkbox to make it a hole in the original polyline solid. So now we have that polyline solid, and if we select it, it has a hole inside of it. Then I'm going to copy this hole, and I'm just going to drag a copy out so that there are two holes, one on top of the other. So if we take a look at this in a 3D view, we'll select our camera options and do a full overview from here, you can see that frame that we've created. So the final step is we just need to create a back for this cabinet. So I'm going to get back to that cross section and I'm going to draw one more polyline solid over top of the first. And if we get into a floor plan and we take a look at these solids that we've drawn, notice it placed that second solid immediately in front of the first. So all I'm going to do is first off I'm going to change the thickness. So I'm going to select this front edge and select the dimension and we're going to change it to 3 quarter inch thick. Then I'm going to change its location. To do that I'm going to use our transform replicate tool. This enables me to move in a very precise direction. So I can move along the X, Y, or Z axis. I'm going to move along the Y delta and I'm going to move it 1.5 inches. Hit enter you can see it moved it very precisely within that view. So now if we get back to our full overview, we have the frame and then we have the back. Now the last thing I want to do is I just want to change the materials. So I'm going to select our material painter tool. 
So this is going to open up all of our materials available within the program. And it actually dropped me right down to the color I want, which is bone, just our simple white color. And I'm going to paste on the whole object that bone color. Then I'm going to go under my 3D options. Nope, I apologize, under our tools. And we're going to go to symbol, convert to symbol. What this does is it enables me to convert this to a symbol that I can use within the program. So instead of doing a fixture, I'm going to do a cabinet door drawer. And what that label means is that when I open up a cabinet and we selected the library to change the door style, remember I said that there was a subset of particular objects? This is going to make sure that this appears within that subset. So it's going to label it as a door and drawer. We'll click OK and it immediately opens up our library and it's just named it untitled. We can change the label of it. Let's call it a two panel door. All right, and so then we're just gonna exit out of this plan. We don't need it anymore, it's done its job. And we'll get back to our plan and I'm gonna tile vertically again. And then I can grab this door style and I can either open up the cabinet and go down to door drawer and change the door style here, or I can just select it in my library here and click to drop it in. And if we change over to a different rendering style, right now we're in our standard render, but if I change over to a vector view, you can see that a little bit better. So I'm also gonna update that on my wall cabinet. Now, both this wall cabinet and this full height cabinet are exactly the way that I want all future wall and full height cabinets in my plan to appear. So what I can do is I can open up my defaults, come down to our cabinets, and I could edit this full height cabinet so that it looks the way the one in our plan does. Or I can select that cabinet, and down here in the edit toolbar, I have a set as default option. So if I click that, it's going to tell me that the defaults have been updated, and now if we were open back up those defaults and take a look at our full height cabinet, it appears exactly like the one that we edited within the plan. So now any full height cabinet that I place from here on after, if I place a couple over here, is going to have the exact specifications of that initial cabinet. So then we'll do the same thing for this wall cabinet. I'm going to set it as default. It tells me that the defaults have been updated and all of the cabinets that I've placed thus far also changed. The reason being, if we open up this cabinet and go down to door drawer, my style is set to use default. What that means is that any time I change what the default door style is, it's going to change this cabinet to reflect the default. And now any wall cabinet I place will have that door style as well. So I'm going to finish off this kitchen. I'll change back to a standard render for right now. And we're going to open back up our library in a second, but I'm going to exit out so that we have a larger space to work with here. Now one thing I see is that the handle style for my doors, I want to match the wall cabinet. So again, I could open up this full height cabinet and I can adjust the handle style, or I can use my object eyedropper. So I can grab this wall cabinet, and down here we have the select properties to paint, so I'm going to open up what properties we're going to load into our eyedropper here. I'm going to clear all of them because the only thing I want is the door handle style. So when that's checked and I can see that it's the bungalow knob, select OK, and I'm going to paste it onto all of the cabinets that are this exact style within the room. All right, so now we just have a few more cabinets to place. We're going to do a little bar area over here. So I'm going to place three base cabinets side by side. I'm going to do one, two, three, and I'm actually going to delete this one because that's going to be a space for a wine fridge. And I'm going to place wall cabinets above this space and I'm going to resize it to 36 inches and place another one right next to it and also resize it to 36 inches. And notice as soon as I reach a certain width the cabinet automatically resizes it to a double door as opposed to a single door. And the reason for that, if we open up this cabinet over here, which we're going to need to change the door anyways, I'll come down to the component and the item type says door auto right. If I switch that over to auto left, 
it's going to switch the hinge side, but we also have the left and right options that are not auto. So if you need to override it for whatever reason you have a very large single door, you can switch over to one of those non-auto options. We're going to change it to an auto left so that it can switch the hinge side. All right, one more wall cabinet. Oh, let's rotate around. So I can place it in a 3D view or I can place it in a 2D. I'm going to do a 2D view. We'll place that wall cabinet and I'm going to resize it to 30 inches, which is going to make it a double door. And then we're going to place one more full height cabinet over here. And notice my handle style has not changed. So I'm going to select the cabinet with the handle style, set it as default, and it'll change that cabinet we just placed. And this cabinet's going to need to ni be nice and big for a fridge. So I'm going to resize it to 48 inches wide. So the last cabinets that we need to place are for our kitchen island. So I'm going to place a base cabinet just right in the middle of the plan, and we're going to turn that around so it's facing where the sink will be. And I'm going to make sure that this is oriented correctly before we place any additional cabinets. So I'm going to use my temporary dimensions to make sure that it's 48 inches from its opposite and also 48 inches from these cabinets here. So we have that nice big walkway. Then I'm going to resize this cabinet to 36 inches. And because I want three 36 inch cabinets side by side, I'm just going to copy this cabinet. I'm going to use my copy tool down here in the edit toolbar and I'm going to pull out a copy and I'm going to copy it again and pull out a copy. So now we have three identical cabinets side by side. Now I need to extend this countertop beyond that, beyond the back of the cabinets. So we do under our cabinet options we have a custom countertop that we could just click and drag to draw over top of the existing cabinet or I can select these cabinets and I'm going to do so by holding down my control key while I select all three and down in my edit toolbar I have a create custom countertop. If you look in the 3D view when I click on this nothing is, happens over here but in my 2D view that countertop now becomes a polyline so that I can make changes to it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is you can see we have different breaks within this cabinet which means that if I wanted to do a number of different shapes where each segment was going to look a little bit different you can do all sorts of things where you curve different segments and do really custom shapes. I'm just going to undo everything that I just did there. That's why it automatically breaks them into different segments but I want to remove those breaks so we have a handy way to be able to do that. I'm going to select as though I'm going to fill it all of the edges and then I'm going to select the far edge over here. So now it's one big segment so if I pull this out it's going to pull the whole thing which is exactly what I want and I want the depth of this countertop to 38 inches. Now I want to add a fillet back in so I'm going to select the edge and we're going to select to fill it I'm going to change the interval so it's now a 6 inch, it's going to be a nice long curve. And I'll select the adjoining edge and if we zoom in you can see that curve. We're going to do so on the other side too. I'm going to select our fillet option, make sure the interval is 6 inches and select the adjoining edge. Now we've got that nice curved back. So we're just going to do a couple more things to this island. First of all we're going to add some side panels onto the sides of each of the island cabinets and as well as to the edge of our bar cabinet. So I'm going to select this cabinet and this one simultaneously by holding down my control key. I'm going to open them up and I'm going to add a panel by going down to front sides back. We're going to change the left side to be paneled. Select OK and it's just going to add a basic panel. We're going to change the style here in just a second, but I'm also going to change this back cabinet on the right side. So we'll change the right side to also be paneled. Okay, now I'm going to open up all three of those cabinets together and I'm going to change the panel style. So we'll go down to our accessories panel and 
open up the library and under my user catalog I have a door style that I've created so it'll place it on the side. It's a crisscross style of panel. Select OK and it's going to update all three to have that style of panel. Now I'm going to change the material of the island because I want it to be a dark color instead of the white cabinets that are throughout the rest of the kitchen. So I'm going to open up my material and in my user catalog I have a number of materials set aside. So here's a dark material for us to use and I'm just going to select each object to change the full cabinet to the, over to that material. And finally I'm going to open up my library and I have some corbels that we're going to use for the backs of the cabinets to hold up that countertop. So I have a curved corbel. I'm just going to click to drop it into the plan. And again this is a situation where we can switch over to a different rendering view in order to see that corbel a little better. Alright, so I'm going to copy that and we're going to copy it four times and in order to do that I'm going to use my multiple copy tool. So there's a couple different ways we can use multiple copy. We can either copy at a certain interval, so if I knew that I wanted to place a corbel every 24 inches for instance I could change that, but what I want to do is I'm going to evenly distribute a number of copies. So I'm going to make three copies of this select OK and now when I pull it out it's gonna place three copies at a even interval as I drag it out. So when I find the space that I want it to be and release it will have placed corbels evenly throughout that distance. And if we rotate around we can see those along the island. And while we're in this uh, catalog we'll go ahead and place a couple of pendants over top this island. And then let's get into the core catalog in our architectural folder. And under appliances, we're going to find a range top. So just a standard size. We'll do a standard range top. And we'll just click on the cabinet we want to place it on. And it's going to automatically integrate it within that cabinet. If you look at 3D, it also has placed it there. So we can do the same thing with sinks. So if we go down to fixtures, we can place a kitchen sink. And I want to do a nice undermount sink. So we'll do a double undermount, or let's actually do an offset undermount. And we'll click on the cabinet that we want to place it in, and it's going to update both in 2D and 3D. And we'll do the same thing for our bar area. Let's rotate around, and we'll find a bar sink. Do a nice square sink, or let's actually do an oblong one. We'll click to drop that in. Going back under appliances, we'll find a dishwasher, and I'm going to do dishwasher drawers, and then we'll click in the cabinet right next to the sink, and it's also going to update and add a label, and I'm going to add in a wall oven. So once we find a wall oven that we like, let's do a, just a stacked wall oven, let's do this one, and we'll click to drop it into this cabinet and it's going to automatically resize the adjoining components in order to accommodate that appliance. We can also open up the cabinet and we can change what those components are. So for instance I can change this over to a drawer and I can split it so that we have a couple of drawers underneath that wall oven. And if I rotate over here we're going to add in a refrigerator. So we'll find a standard size refrigerator, do a built-in double door make sure that that's what we're grabbing and we'll click to drop that in. And in this instance I want to get rid of that door because it doesn't really make sense for that space. So I'm going to select the component and delete it. It's going to make an opening so I'm going to select the component and delete it again. And it'll resize the cabinet to fit. So instead of doing that I'm going to open it up and we're going to select that component and we're just going to change it over to a blank area. So now it's just a blank area up above there. We don't really need any type of a component there. And the final appliance that I want to place in my plan is our wine fridge. And I believe I have this down in my user catalog. We have a wine fridge that I've selected. I'm just going to click to drop that in. And if we look in our full camera view, this was actually not a built-in appliance. All of the other appliances that we've placed are built-in. This is a 
a freestanding appliance. And the countertop is not extending across it. So I'm going to do a similar thing that we did to create the island. I'm going to select the cabinet and I'm going to create a custom countertop so that then I can grab the edge of that countertop and just extend it across so now it extends over top of that wine fridge. Now I want to actually take an elevation view. We haven't done that type of a view yet. Um, one of our camera options, so we have our perspective views which is what we've been working with here where typically it's going to open up in our standard render view. We also have a number of elevation options. So we have a full cross section, which is going to be like our elevation view on the outside of our house. We have a back clipped cross section, which takes a clip of the home. So if you're going to do through the home, like where a staircase is, would be a good example of that. Or we have a wall elevation. So for our kitchen, we want to do just the single wall elevation. So I'm going to click and drag towards the wall that I want to create an elevation of. And I'm going to move the full camera over here so that I can have the wall elevation now the first thing I want to do while we're in this view is we're going to place some windows. We haven't placed any doors or windows yet, so I'm just going to place a window up above my sink and notice how it automatically resizes to accommodate the backsplash. So it's going to make sure that it's not encroaching into our cabinet or into our backsplash. Then I'm going to resize the height of this to 54 inches and I'm going to resize the width to 27 inches. Open it up and under our lights panel I'm going to add in some window panes. So I'm just going to add one going in each direction. Then we'll select OK to apply that change. I'm going to leave it a double hung window. Now I'm going to use my automatic dimensions in order to dimension this space. So one of our automatic options when we're in an elevation view is to use our auto elevation and KBA dimension. And as long as we're in our NKB annotations, it's going to do it at a half inch scale. Now I'm going to select this window, and I know that I want it to be exactly 32 inches from that cabinet. So I'll type in 32 and hit enter, and it'll resize that. Excuse me, it'll move it over. Now I'm going to drag a copy out in either direction. So I'm just going to copy that window, pull out a copy, copy the window and pull out a copy. So now that window is exactly copied on either direction. Then I'm going to actually open up this center window and I'm going to change it to a fixed glass and we're going to need to add in a couple more window panes. Not any across, we need to add in some vertical ones so that the style matches the other windows. Now I'm going to add in a custom backsplash. So one of our cabinet options is a custom backsplash. So I can click and drag in order to draw out a custom style, but I'm going to undo that. And instead, with that custom backsplash selected, I'm just going to click on the wall and it will automatically place a backsplash between the base cabinets, the full height cabinets, and going up to the top of the full height cabinets. So if we deselect that, you can see where that is. And I'm going to grab the top of this backsplash and just pull it down a little bit because we don't need it to be quite that high. And it automatically cuts that backsplash around the cabinets and around the windows so it's not encroaching into that window. Now I just need to clean up my dimensions a little bit. So first off I'm gonna just start on one side and start removing some of my dimensions. I don't need to show the countertop so I'm gonna delete that. I don't need to show my toe kick dimension. Um, and I don't need to show the height of my window, so I'm going to remove that um, and make sure that I have everything I need, the cabinet, the molding. All right, we're good there. Now I'm going to come over to this side and I don't need duplicate dimensions, so we already have the ceiling height, so I'm going to delete that. Now I'm going to delete the countertop, delete the toe kick. And up at the top, I don't need each individual window, I just want the windows as a whole. And I want the full height or full width of this cabinet, not the individual sides. Okay, and down at the bottom, again, I don't need a duplicate dimension, so I'm going to delete that to 77 inches. And then I'm going to remove all my window dimensions because I don't need those down at the bottom. So it's just picking up my cabinets and my appliances. 
All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and save this camera so we can save it. And when I exit out in my floor plan, you can still see that call out. Now I want to edit the size of that call out, so I'm just going to select it and I'm going to open it up. And down in plan display, I'm going to uncheck automatic for the call out size. We'll change it to more like 10 inches. And here I can change the label. I'm going to leave it as E1, which is going to be elevation 1. Select OK. And now we also need to change the text, the text size. So in order to do that, I'm going to change the text of the layer. So I'm going to open up our particular layer properties. So I have cameras selected. I have text style here. And I'm going to define and change it over to 4 inches. So we're going to reduce the text size for that text style throughout the entire plan because I don't ever want my text to be quite that large. All right. And while we're looking at that, I also want to show you, we can also change the color of every layer within the program. So if I want to change the color of the cameras or of our cabinet labels or really anything, we can switch that over on a layer set by layer set basis. Chief Architect is very flexible as far as how we're going to be displaying everything within the program. You have control over all of that. Now let's get back into our full camera view. Take a look at our kitchen so far. Uh, we just added in our windows. Let's also add in a couple of doors. So I'm just going to click to place a door within the program. And it's automatically going to place an exterior door because as you'll, you'll recall, we've placed exterior walls into an exterior space. So we'll open this up and I'm going to change the door style that we're using. So it's more like an interior door style. So we'll come up to our panel doors and find one that we like here. So let's do this P05. And I also want to make sure, so let's look at the interior. We want to change the handle. I'm going to get into our hardware. And for an interior handle, handle we're going to switch over to a lever. And our size is quite a bit bigger than we need. So let's change over to more like a 32 inch door. OK. And I'm going to change the location on the wall. And then I'm going to set that as our default so that now when I place a door over on this wall, it's going to automatically place that same style. And you can see how in editing doors, it was basically the exact same process that we went through for editing cabinets. So editing any object within Chief Architect is going to take the same sort of process. So as soon as you learn how to edit one object, you can open up any object and look at the different options in order to edit it. So you can see that we can update casing, we can add a lintel, um, we can change in the hardware like we did, we can add in an arch, um, and even though we've placed a hinged door, we could switch over to a doorway or a pocket door or any different style that we needed. All right, and looking at this, it looks like we placed our custom countertop, or excuse me, backsplash over our against the sink wall, but we need to place a couple more. So in my cabinet options, I'm going to grab that custom countertop and I'm just going to click on each of the remaining cabinet walls. So now we have that backsplash throughout our entire plan. And we'll be updating some of these materials here in a little bit. But before we do that, I want to create a custom ceiling. And let's take a look at the render that we looked at at the beginning of our plan. So here's the kitchen that we're working on right now. You can see we're almost finished with the design, but this is the custom ceiling that we're going to work on. So to start out with, I'm going to get into my floor plan and I'm going to select the room. So we created a polyline solid earlier by selecting our primitive tools and simply drawing it out. We can also create it in a different way. So I'm going to select the room because I know that I want this ceiling to be placed throughout the envelope of this room. So in order to do that, I have a make room polyline option. So I'll click on that. And yes, I do want to display that layer so we can see what we're creating. 
And right now it's just placed a standard polyline, which is a 2D CAD object. It doesn't have any 3D data at this point. But I can convert it using this handy little convert tool. And I'm going to convert it over to a polyline solid, which is what we used earlier to create the custom door style. Again, it's just a slab of concrete to begin with. So it's going to open it up. And I'm going to change it to a 4 inch thick. And the elevation, I want to use the ceiling as a reference. And I know that it's going to hit the top of what is my current ceiling. So it needs to be 0 inches from the top of the ceiling and 4 inches from the ceiling to the bottom of this poly polyline solid. So we'll select OK and it's just going to place that. So if we get into a full camera view, I need to turn on that layer. We're not going to see it right now because that layer is turned off. So in display options, I can come down to our CAD. And as you'll recall, it said that it was on the CAD kitchen and bath layer. So once I turn that layer on, we can see it. Now back in my floor plan, actually let's tile our views vertically again so we can see what we're doing as we're updating it. I'm going to draw another polyline over top of the first and this is going to be where we're going to have a hole in the ceiling. Again, it's going to draw it on the floor to begin with, but I'm going to open it up and I'm going to select hole in polyline solid. So it's creating a hole in the polyline that we just created. Now I need to redimension this poly or the hole in the polyline rather. So I'm going to change the width to 4 feet 6 inches and or the depth rather and the width to 12 feet 6 inches. Then I want to center this on the island. So I'm going to use my center object tool to center the width and then to center the depth and it should pick up that countertop for us. Alright, so now what I want to do is create slats. So I'm going to draw another polyline and this is just going to be a small polyline. We're going to open it up and the thickness I want to be three and a half inches thick and we're going to change the reference over to ceiling so it's zero inches from the ceiling. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in so that I can change the width as well, which it's pretty close to what we want. I want 1.75 inches. All right, and then I want to position it so it's 9 inches from the edge of this hole. And instead of doing resize, we want to make sure that we are selecting move object, so it's not going to change the width of my polyline solid. It's just going to move it. Now I'm going to use that multiple copy tool again. I know that I want 10 slats total, so I'm going to choose to make 9 copies and I'm going to evenly space them. So when I drag out, it's going to evenly space until I release. Now let's double click on our full camera because we're going to need to do some work on our materials. So I'm going to first use my material eyedropper to grab the original ceiling material and paste it onto this object. And then I'm going to get into my library and I have a wood material that I'm going to use, a nice bleached wood. And I'm going to paste it onto an object, but I can also paste it onto that material throughout the entire room. And since I know that that concrete is only being used for these slats, I'm going to switch over to room mode and click to place that material on the concrete throughout the entire room. Now the very last thing that I need to do for that ceiling is I'm going to add a molding around the edge. So I'm going to select the hole and what I'm going to do is copy and paste that hole into place so it's going to create an exact copy right on top of the original. Then I'm going to convert that copy to, an, to a plain polyline so it's going to go back to just a plain CAD polyline where we don't have any 3D data for this polyline right now. And just like we converted the polyline earlier to a polyline solid this time I'm going to convert this polyline to a molding polyline. So we're going to create a molding right in the space where that hole is. It's going to open up the specification. I'm going to come down to moldings and we're going to add a new molding. I'm going to come in and find a crown molding and we're going to use the same one we used on our cabinets. I want it to be four inches high and let's do four inches wide as well so that it matches the height of our uh, hole that we have, the ceiling. 
and I want to make sure that I have extrude inside polyline. So if I uncheck this, it's going to create the molding so that it's coming out of where that polyline is. So the 3D comes out of that line. We want it to come in from that line so that it's we can see it within that hole. So we'll select OK. And if we get back into our full camera view, you can see that molding has been placed around that hole. Now there's a few more materials we need to change. I'm going to come into my library and I have a backsplash material. And I'm going to paste that throughout the entire plan. So now that subway material that we were using for our backsplash has been changed to a different tile material. And I want a tile for my floor too. So I'm going to come in, let's grab a manufacturer catalog and I want to use a dowel tile material. So I'm just going to browse through here and we'll browse the different folders um, and I want to use this one. So once we have picked a material, I'm just going to paste it onto my floor. And what I want to do is I want to make this tile much larger, so about twice the size of what we're using right now. And I want to change it so it's diagonal. So we have this adjust material definition tool. So I can click on any material within the plan and I can make changes to it. So for instance, I could change the color by coming down to this texture and selecting blend with texture and I could change it over to a blue color, which is not what I want to do. But we can also come down to this texture and we can change the angle. So I'm going to make it a 45 degree angle so it's a di diagonal cut tiles. And I'm going to change the scale so it's double the size. So from 24 to 48 inches. And because retain aspect is checked, it's going to resize it on both the X and Y scale. So I'll click OK. And you can see the changes that have been made here, but I also want to make it easy on our tile guy. It looks like we're having to cut a fairly small piece over on the edge here. So I'm going to select that again and I'm going to change the Y position. So it's going to offset the material a little bit. So let's start by trying to change the Y position. Let's see what 4 inches does. Alright, so it moved it over exactly in line with those cabinets. So it actually that 4 inches was a good fit. I'm going to select that again and I also want to change the pattern. So we want to make sure that the pattern angle matches because this is how it's going to look in our orthographic view. So in any elevation type view or even our line drawing. And I'm going to change the vertical offset 4 inches. Okay. So it looks like the only material I have left to change is a couple of our appliance and fixture materials. I'm going to select my material eyedropper and just grab this stainless steel and then I'm going to paste it onto this dishwasher and then onto my sink. So now we're pretty well set. Our 3D view is looking almost exactly like the image that we're trying to create here. The only thing we need to add in is we need to add in some of our electrical, so some of our lighting. So I'm going to go back to my floor plan and I'm going to select my electrical tools. So under my electrical options we have a 110 and 220 volt outlet. These are just what's set as our default. We have quite a few different options available within our library as well. And we also have a light and our default light for this plan it looks like is a recessed light. So I'm going to click and just drop one into the plan and then I want make sure that this is dimensioned appropriately. So before I before I use my dimension tool, I'm going to switch my annotation set so that it's over to my electrical annotations, which is not only going to change the layer set that we're using, so it's switched over to the electrical set, but when I use my dimensioning tools and I'm going to use my centerline dimension, it's automatically set up to grab only electrical objects. So I'm going to click and drag in either direction and I want to make sure I'm grabbing the inside of my wall and not the outside so I'm just going to pull those in. Then I'm going to select my light, click on the dimension and I'm going to change it, let's do 42 inches from the wall. And 42 inches. Alright, so once that one is dimensioned I'm going to use my multiple copy tool 
and this time instead of evenly distributing a certain number of copies we're going to change the offset 42 inches is exactly what we want so I'm just going to click and drag to place two lights 42 inches apart I'm going to do the same thing here and our interval is already set so we don't need to worry about that and one more here so we're going to use our multiple copy to pull those out now if we get back to our full camera view we can't actually see those lights yet the reason being that they're set above this polyline solid so back to my floor plan I'm gonna open up these lights and I'm gonna hold down my control key to select all of these lights at once and I'm gonna open them up and within lights we can change the offset from the ceiling so I'm gonna drop it down four inches also in whenever we're working with lights we have a light data tab so I can change the intensity of the lights I can change the type of light so it can be like a parallel light which would be similar some track lighting options um, a spotlight a point light uh, we can change the direction that that light is going and whether or not it's going to be on in our camera view I'm going to select OK and if we get into our full camera the offset dropped it down below our polyline solid and just to finish out our electrical plan and under our electrical options I'm also going to drop a switch onto this wall and onto this wall I'm actually going to drop two over here we'll move this one over a little bit and we'll drop one right next to it and then I'm going to use my connect electrical in order to connect this switch to each of my recessed lights so we're just going to drag a connection all the way around and then finally I'm going to connect over to this switch as well and as soon as I have lights connected to two switches it automatically updates the symbol to indicate that it is a three-way switch then I'm going to pull my connection so that we have a light switch for our pendants as well all of these lines can be edited so if we want to temper this curve a little bit we can pull it out to different directions um, we can even open up in the layer and change the color so I'm going to change it to just a slightly lighter color do like a light pink so it'll change all of those connections to be a little bit softer and when I switch back over to my NKBA annotations and my kitchen and bath set it's going to turn off those electrical connections because those layers are turned off in the kitchen and bath uh, annotation and layer set so now that I'm on the NKB annotations I'm gonna select inside of this room and I'm gonna use that NKBA auto dimension tool again to redimension the space and make sure that we have any duplicates deleted so that when we create our layout here in a second everything is ready for it um, the last thing that I want to delete is I want I don't want our individual video uh, windows I just want a single one so that it's showing the width of all three okay so let's take a look at our layout set or our layout page rather which is gonna be like our construction document so I'm gonna go under file and I'm gonna open a layout um, we're going to create a new layout from template so we have a number of different layout templates depending upon the size that you want to print I want to do an architectural C layout so I'm going to open this size up and I don't want to set that as my default we just want to open it this one time so this is our layout page uh, we have a title block automatically set up and if we go down to page zero all of these lines that are here are editable the page numbers are editable um, we can adjust the different text that we're using if you want it to say something different um, you can even create your own all of these are just CAD objects so you can draw out different boxes and lines in order to create the layout style that you want we even have a spot for you to import your logo so you can have the logo in here um, page zero is where every other page is going to display 
So anything that you add onto page zero will show up on every other page. It's not something that we want to send a view to. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my floor plan. And since we just dimensioned that, um, I'm going to open up my full camera and save it. And then exit out. And I'm going to turn off that layer so it's not going to show up in my layout page. So we'll open up that layer and just turn off the display for just a second. Now I'm going to send this to my layout. It's going to ask what page I want to send it to. I'm going to send it to page 2. Page 1 we're going to have be just a 3D view, so we'll send that one in just a second. Um, scaling, I know that I've set all of my text to be a half an inch scale, so I'm going to switch that over. Select OK, and it will send that directly to page 2. Let's see, we're on page 2 here. I'm going to go back to my floor plan and let's turn that camera right back on so that we can open it up. And we'll take a look at that view. So in this 3D view, we have a few different options. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that we can see that kitchen a little better. So right now we're using what's called our standard render view. We've also switched over to our orthographic a couple of times during this presentation. But we can also do a glass house, a duotone, a technical illustration, a painting, a watercolor, a line drawing, and we can even do a watercolor with a line drawing on top. So when we select technique options, each of these techniques has different options for you to be able to edit it. Watercolor has the ability to add a line drawing on top. So once you find the rendering technique that you want, we can send this to our layout as well. So this will send to, let's do page one. And I'm gonna do the current screen. We obviously don't have a scale because it's just a 3D view. And this can be resized, so we can make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to move it up into place a little bit, and we'll snap it along this edge. Now I'm going to go back to my floor plan, and we'll open up this elevation view that we did earlier. And I'm going to remove the color, and we'll send this to layout as well. And this one we'll send to page 3. And it looks like I didn't pay attention to the scale when I sent it in. So we sent it at a quarter inch scale instead of a half inch. So instead of having to go back and send it again, I'm just going to select this rescale option so I can switch it over to a half inch scale and resize it with a single. So then I can move this around and I can add labels, I can add a call out. There's quite a few different options in order to, to edit this and make it look the way I want it to. Back in our floor plan, the very last thing I want to do is I want to add a cabinet schedule. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this in our floor plan. I'm going to come up to our tools. We have schedules and I'm just going to drop in a cabinet schedule so we can see what that looks like. So these are all the different cabinets that we've placed in our plan. Um, we can rearrange this schedule so I can add in, I'm going to add in an elevation view so we can see the elevation of each cabinet. If you only want base or only want wall cabinets, you can select and deselect the different types of objects. And we can also move around the order. So if I want my sink base, for instance, if we scroll down until we find that, if I want that to be number one, I can just move it up until it's in that position. And if we look at our cabinets now in our floor plan view, they're now showing the labels to correspond with the schedule. We can change that if we open up the schedule. If we go down to the label option, we can deselect use callout for label. And we can change the way that that's displayed too. So if you just want them to be numbered, if you don't want the C in front of it, you can just delete that. There's quite a bit of flexibility here. Now I'm going to turn those elevation views back off. So I can just select the 3D elevation, remove it. Um, I can remove any other columns that I don't want and then I'm going to send it to my layout page. So I'll send to layout. Uh, let's do page 4. And again I need to rescale it. So let's try a half inch scale, see how that looks. That still might be a little bit small. 
Let's do a three quarter inch scale. All right, that's a little bit better. Then we'll put that into place. So in just a little bit of time, we not only created an entire kitchen, but we were able to create our layout page as well. You can see how easy it is to do kitchen designs within Chief Architect. So I wanna thank you so much for attending this demonstration today. Again, the two products that we offer in our professional line are Premier and Interiors. Interiors is specific to kitchen and bath design. Premier is going to add in the ability to do framing and full construction documents as well as landscaping, um, as well as some of the features that we looked at today, like the ability to work with annotation and layer sets and the ability to create a custom symbol. Those are things that would be particular to the Premier version. All purchases of our software, including upgrades, include a full year of support and software assurance. So that's going to include the things that I mentioned earlier. We also have the ability to rent Chief Architect. So you can rent it for $199 a month, and if you rent consecutively, it will accumulate towards ownership as well. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us. Email us at sales at chiefarchitect.com or call us at one of these numbers, and we would be happy to help you out. Thank you again for attending and I hope you have a wonderful day.